Welcome to my channel. Now, this is the hybrid roof that I've been working on and you will have seen us put the wall plates on originally and then crane in the main components, which were the large attic trusses. Now that's the bit that starts off the whole hybrid roof project for me because once I've landed those, they then support the floor joists. Once the floor joists are in, we can then lay our floor, which is protected from the weather. Uh, that's how the system works and that'll enable us then to build the roof. So it creates a safe sort of base for us to work on as opposed to putting the joists in, raftering it all out. Once we do it like that, it's really straightforward. So basically this is a gable to gable roof. So what that means is this is a gable and at the other end there's a gable and on the front there's a gable creating two valleys, okay? And on the back of this roof, we've got three dormers. On the front of this roof, we've got another dormer and a roof light over a stairwell. So. The good thing about a hybrid roof is the fact that we can have a separate setup on the back, a separate setup on the front, and instead of using steel, we've designed all the steel out of this property. We have what we call a lattice ridge, and it's these ridges that actually give us all that strength. They're super lightweight and easy to fit even when they are nailed together. I think the heaviest one was around about 70 kilos. Um, and to manage something like that is a lot better than a steel which might be 200 or 250 kilos. So I'm just going to take you through and show you a few features of the roof. So let's have a little look inside the roof. So this is the gable that I referred to as the front gable here. And we're going to have a set of French casement like bifolds here, which are going to have a Juliet balcony. So that's a particularly nice feature. And then here are the valleys. This is the first valley on this side, which comes up and locks in between the two lattice ridges at the top up there. So it's quite an intricate bit of work there. The lattice ridges are simply hung together and fixed together to each other, all being worked out by the engineers, of course. And then on this side, you can see this valley coming down and connecting into that big girder truss. Then from there, we switch to a layboard which takes us down over that piece of the roof there to what will be the roof light, which is just beyond there. Let me just show you where the roof light is gonna be. It's gonna be in between that big gap there. And there's the other dormer on the front. So let's have a little look inside. So there's the large gable on this end. It's formed out of 145 by 47 stud. That enables us to get a decent bit of insulation in and then obviously services before we plasterboard and drywall. On the outside of this whole roof, I forgot to add this, is the fact that it's a warm roof. So we've got 100 mil PIR over the top of the rafters. We've got 120 on the outside of the OSB, which is going on these gables. And we're then going in between the rafters with another 100 mil. So it's gonna be really, really well insulated. So here's a typical dormer setup. We've got these girder beams which sit on top of our wall plates there, another integral part of the structural design. We land our dormer wall that we made on top of that, and then we land a triple up either side for the cheeks. Now we've not pitched these yet because I'm gonna put PIR all the way over the top here, and then I'm gonna build it all off layboards. Otherwise we've got to have all those mitres, intersections of PIR, it just makes it particularly difficult. So as we come through, you can see how all of the lattices run straight down the middle and hang off the large attic sort of girder trusses there. It makes a really nice detail. That incidentally is the ceiling level. And what we do to put our ceiling in is really straightforward. We fix angled timbers or plates all the way along the backs of the rafters that connects all the rafters together. And then we simply hang with a smaller section of timber from this truss here all the way out to those rafters. You can also put them onto the side of the rafters, which is also a nice detail. And in our case, we would do that after we put our PIR in so they don't interfere. This is the gable on the other end here. So we've got a dormer here and another one on the back. So you can see the scale of the room. It's really quite nice. Now over the stairwell here, you see we've incorporated a purlin. Now that's because the slope is going to be all on show. There isn't a void wall or anything supporting it like that. And then there's going to be a roof light position here. Once I know my eave detail, I'll position that window because I'll be able to work out the tile courses. So we've got a full course under the window, which is what you want with a large format tile. Let's go and take a look at the outside. So this is the main slope at the back with the three dormers in. And I've just got to go and cut these feet, which basically go all the way through there. Before I put them in, 
I will insulate all in between these little squares here. Um, the other bit here can be done from inside the room. And then we'll put OSB all the way through and down. We'll then pitch a little roof all the way through. I'll put a plate on this block work here. I'll put another plate on here. I'm gonna have a series of little rafters which will all be exactly the same. And then we have to, because we're putting PIR over the top of this, 100 mil, we have another foot, which I'm gonna make, which sits onto here, and it will finish 147 mil with a rebate to take the counter batten, which is 47 by 47, so two by two, all over the top. So the foot will be a solid foot. We'll then cut our fascia cut on there, and we'll end up with a fascia of around about 200 millimeters. So it's really, uh, a nice detail. You'd never know that it was a warm roof by the time we finished. Gable ladders, of course, which are going to be sitting on top of our gable frame here. They come up to the top of the 100mm insulation and then they hang out of the gable far enough to accommodate our OSB, PIR. Once we've got the PIR, we've got another 2x2 two two or 47x47 47 47 batten and then we've got a counter batten, and then we've got vertical timber cladding. All the dormers are going to be timber clad as well. Gable roofs, and they're going to look particularly nice. So that's the basis of this hybrid roof. And um, the beauty of this is you, you can eliminate the steel. It's fairly cost effective. The timber we use is called TR26, which is basically means truss rafter 26. It's um, not eased edge, so it's got a square edge on it, which I particularly like when I'm cutting intricate rafters because when you're marking the lengths, you can get it exactly right without allowing for that little corner that you see on this eased edge stuff here. And yeah, so that's about it. Let me go and show you some of the valley work. So the beauty of building a roof like this is at some point, it, as you change direction, you've got to form an intersection. And um, I've done that quite a lot, and you'll be able to see that on the Big Build series where I've actually put valley rafters in, showed you how I mark them, measure them, cut them, and also the valley jacks as well. So why don't you try and um, go back through and have a look at that. Incidentally, the reason why I haven't filmed a lot of this roof is because I've covered a lot of this on the Big Build. So um, have a look at that video as well. It's worth going back through and seeing. Although the Big Build was a bigger roof, it was very similar indeed to this all right so um yeah we're i've just got a load more framing out to do now set some saws up downstairs and get it all framed out and then once all the framing's done and everything's in position then we'll start putting the pir over the top and i think i'm going to do some footage of that because i've not covered that here on the channel so that is the hybrid roof and um, if you're interested in a hybrid roof and you don't know where to start where to look leave me a message and I may be able to connect you with the right people to actually design and get one of these delivered. Whether you can find someone to build it or not on site is another thing. Obviously, the skills are um, diminishing all the time in the trade and I'm 54 and I know there's some amazing new carpenters coming in, there's just not enough. So um, yeah, we just need more and more good people and we need to pass on this knowledge. That's partly the reason I do these videos. I hope you enjoy them. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.